Open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Job, chapter number 14. The book of Job, chapter number 14. And I want to read uh, a verse this morning and then share the message that the Lord has laid upon our heart. Job, chapter 14. I want to bow for just a word of prayer and ask the Lord to add his blessing to his word this morning. And I trust you'll pray for us as the Lord will help us to be a blessing to those that have come this way today. Our Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence this morning, Lord, I'm conscious this morning of our need of thee. And I've also been conscious of your presence here this morning during the singing. And I pray that same Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that is born witness and been up on the singing this morning will be up on this preacher as I stand here to preach. I pray you'll help me to be a blessing. Quicken our heart and our mind after thee this morning. And I pray you'll bless your word to your own honor and glory. Speak to the heart of every individual who is assembled here today. And we'll give you the praise for all you do because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Job chapter 14. I want to read this morning just one verse, and that is verse 1. Where the scripture said, Man is born of a woman. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Wednesday night, I preached a message for a few moments on how Christian looks at trouble. I want to preach this morning for the next few minutes on living through trouble. Living through trouble. Not just looking at it, our attitude about it. As I preach Wednesday night, what kind of actions do we take? Living through trouble. I think that it's very appropriate Preach about living through trouble because as Job has said here, man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Life is short and there's much trouble along the way. If you're here this morning, your life is free of trouble. Just rejoice and be glad about it. Brother Roloff used to say you're either in a storm now, just came out of one or headed for one. Life has its troubles. Christians are not exempt from trouble. They come to us from time to time. It's a question is how we deal with them, how we live through troubles. I want to give you five brief things this morning on living through trouble. The first thing I want to say about it this morning is be prepared for it. Now, don't misunderstand me. There's a difference in being prepared for it and being ready for it. None of us are ever ready for trouble. But you can be prepared for it. For instance, I'm not ready to die, but I am prepared for it. And so there's a difference in being ready and being prepared. I think one of the worst things you can do is be presumptuous. And take the attitude when you look around about you and see the trouble that's in the world and even in the lives of others and people you know, of taking the attitude, well, it'll never happen to me. It could. Proverbs 27 and verse 1 says, To boast not thyself of tomorrow, for we know not what tomorrow may bring. None of us in this building this morning know what tomorrow may hold for us. Sometimes it only takes one phone call to turn your life upside down. I know of people who feeling fine. A fellow told me the other day, uh, I was talking to a, a, a person. He was telling me about his father. He said, my dad has cancer. He, he didn't experience any symptoms. He went to the doctor for just a checkup and a physical. And the next thing you know, the doctor sit him down and told him that he had cancer. Life and its circumstances can change in a moment's notice. 
And though we're never ready for trouble, we can be prepared for it. You remember what Noah said? The Bible said he prepared an ark to the saving of his house. He didn't wait till the storm come. He had heard the storm was coming. God had told him what he was going to do. And Noah didn't wait until the storm came. Like the rest of his generation, the Bible said they knew not till the flood came and took them all away. It's too late to get ready when the, when the flood came. Like the little boy, the storm came and the wind was blowing and the lightning was flashing, the thunder was rolling. The little boy looked at his grandmother and he said, Grandmother, aren't you going to pray? The storm's here. And she looked at him and said, No, son, I prayed before the storm ever got here. And though we're never ready for trouble, we can live with a heart that is prepared for trouble, knowing that it can happen to us and knowing that it can come to us. We can live in such a way our relationship to the Lord can be so that trouble does not have to destroy us. So I think the first thing is about trouble is that you can be ready for it because none of us are exempt from it. It can happen to the best of us. And it seems as though trouble is no respecter of person. All you have to do is read the Bible to understand that. All you have to do is read the Bible to understand that trouble comes to all of us and none of us are exempt from trouble that comes, but we can be prepared for it. We can live in such a way before the Lord and have such a relationship with the Lord that trouble does not have to devastate and destroy our lives. So you may not be ready for it, but you can be prepared for it. Number two, not only should you be prepared for it, but number two, you should pray and be prayerful during it. Nothing wrong with praying. I mentioned a moment ago about the lady praying before the storm came. Nothing wrong with praying during the storm. But you don't want to wait until the storm comes to start praying. Look with me, if you will, to the book of Psalms for a moment. Chapter 107. Psalms 107. I want to share some verses with you this morning out of this psalm. Psalms 107, relating the wilderness journeys of the children of Israel and how the Lord had dealt with them through the wilderness journey. And here in Psalms 107, the Bible said in verse number 5, they were hungry and thirsty and their soul fainted in them. But notice verse 6, then they cried, unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. They were in trouble. Their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord. In other words, they made their petition to the Lord. Skip with me, if you will, to verse 13. Let's read verse 12. Therefore he brought them down... Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of all their distresses. Look up in verse 18. Their soul abhorreth all manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saveth them out of their distresses. Look down in verse 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Anybody identify with that? They were at their wit's end. They didn't know what to do. They were at the end of their own wisdom and knowledge and they did not know which way to turn and life was just reeling them to and fro and they were as helpless as a drunk man. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. I think I'll go ahead and read verse 29. He maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. In the time of trouble, you ought to be prepared for it, but you ought to be prayerful during it. 
And it is all right to petition the Lord because regardless of what the circumstances or situation is, you can cry unto the Lord in your time of trouble and know that the Lord can hear you and he can deliver you. But not only during that time of trouble should you make a petition to the Lord, but it'd be a good thing to offer some praise too. There is something that I noticed about this psalm when I was reading over these verses last night and running the references through the Bible on this subject of trouble. And here's something that I, that I couldn't help. It got my attention that stood out to me. In verse number six, he talked about, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. But look down in verse eight. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Again, I read to you in verse 13, then they cried unto the Lord. But down in verse 15, following that cry and following that petition, the scripture said again, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I read a moment ago in verse 19, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And then again, following that in verse 21, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And then again, I read to you in verse 28, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And then again, following that in verse 31, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. For his wonderful works to the children of men, verse 32 said, let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. Now what that means is though you're in trouble and you've made your petition to the Lord and you're here this morning in the congregation and you're among the elders of the assembly, don't forget to also offer up praise unto the Lord. Because in spite of your trouble, you still have many things to praise God for. Praise Him for His wonderful works. Now look in verse 43, and this also got my attention. Verse 43 said, Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. You know what the devil wants you to do in the time of trouble? He wants you to get a bad attitude about God. You cry out to the Lord and, and make your petition to the Lord and, and boy, God, don't just in a split second of time just wipe away all your problems and bring immediate deliverance just like that. And the next thing you know, the devil gets up here in your mind, gets to working on you, and he'll have your attitude messed up about the Lord and have you wondering if God really cares about you or if God really loves you. But he said, if you're wise, you will observe these things. And he said, when you observe these things, you are going to understand the loving kindness of the Lord. In other words, you're going to come through this time of trouble, making your petition, but also offering your praise, and you're going to come out with an understanding about the loving kindness of the Lord, that he loves you in spite of your trouble. Amen. Amen. And no matter what kind of circumstances you're in this morning, it has nothing to do whatsoever whether God loves you or not. Amen. So be prepared for it. Be prayerful during it. The third thing this morning is be patient through it. Isaiah 40, verse 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Be patient during it. Wait on the Lord. We're in the book of Psalms. Turn back to chapter 37 for a moment. In fact, if you're in trouble this morning, I recommend the book of Psalms. <laughs> Look in Psalms 37. Be patient. And what I mean by being patient is simply this, don't quit. 
You ever thought about how easy it is when, when you're in trouble to just throw in the towel and quit? Kind of amazes me. I never have met a preacher that his church was on top and people were being saved and his church was growing and everybody loved him and things was going great that told me he wanted to quit. But I've met a few along the way <laughs> in the time of trouble that has wanted to quit. You know when the easiest time in the world to quit is when you're in trouble. But in the time of trouble, don't quit. Anybody can quit in the time of trouble. It's easy to quit when everything's going wrong. Sometimes in this generation, I'd like to just, if, if I had it, I'd like to just, just have grace and determination and grit and backbone and will. And, and, and I'd like, you know, sometimes when I talk to people, I'd like to just say, open up! And just give them a dose of all of that. <laughs> say, life's not over yet. People think they don't have anything. Well, we've got everything in the world to live for. Be patient during that time of trouble. Don't give up. Don't quit. Just be patient. Amen. Psalms 37, verse number 3, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring... Uh, he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and notice this, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. If you've got a pen handy this morning, look at verse 3. And look at that word trust. And underline that word trust. Then in verse 4, look at that word delight. And then in verse 5, underline the word commit. And then down in verse 7, underline the word rest. And underline in verse 7 also the word wait. In fact, just add patiently to the end of that wait. Now go back and look at that. What do you do in the time of trouble? How can I be patient in the time of trouble when everything's going wrong? Just trust, delight, commit, rest, and wait patiently. Amen. Pretty good prescription, isn't it? <laughs> be patient during this time of trouble that's in your life. We're in Psalms 37, looking in, look in Psalms 40. We're talking about being patient during this time of trouble. Psalms 40, very familiar verse. We always relate this word, this, this passage to salvation. And it is a passage related to salvation, but it just might not be solely related to salvation from hell or from sin. Could be salvation from whatever you're in this morning. <laughs> and look what David said. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry and he brought me up also out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay and he set my feet upon a solid rock and established my goings and he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and shall trust in the Lord. David said, I was in a horrible pit. I was in the miry clay. In other words, he is saying, I was in a helpless situation. But he said, I cried unto the Lord, and then I waited patiently on him. And what he simply means by waiting patiently on the Lord, he didn't give God a timetable when he had to do something. He didn't draw God a time frame and say, now, Lord, this is it. You've got to get in my time frame and do things when I want them done. The Bible said, here I, here I was, David said, here I was in a horrible pit in the miry clay. I couldn't help myself. I knew that God was the only hope I had. I cried unto the Lord and I inclined my ear. In other words, I expected to hear from him. And I not only expected to hear from him, I didn't put no time limits on God. I just waited patiently on him. And he said, you know what? 
<laughs> he heard my cry, and out of that miry clay, he lifted my feet from that miry clay and set me on a solid rock and established my goings. And on top of that, he put a song in my heart, even praise unto God. He said, I come out of that miry clay, out of that horrible pit after I'd waited patiently on the Lord. And he said, I came out of there with a song in my heart. I want to tell you that, well, glory to God. That time of trouble you're in this morning, if you'll just wait patiently on him, he may bring you out of that miry clay in which you're in that you're so helpless in that situation, and he may put a song in your heart and give you something to sing about when you get out of there. Just be patient and wait on him. Well, thank you, God, I needed this where anybody else did or not. Sometimes I need to hear my own preaching. Why well, shame on the devil? Amen. Be patient through it. Be patient through it. There's a fourth thing this morning. Be positive about it. I said, be positive about it. Boy, isn't it easy to get down in the mouth when you're in a time of trouble and never say anything positive, just talk down all the time. Here, we're still in the book of Psalms. Look in Psalms 138. We're, we're talking about the time of trouble that we ought to be positive about it. To be positive about it just simply means that we're expressing our faith in God. Psalms 138. Look in verse 7. David said, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, Thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Now notice something about these two verses. David said, though I walk in the midst of trouble, he's going to revive me. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt. He didn't say, I hope the Lord will revive me. But he said, thou wilt. He's talking positive. No question mark on that. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, though my soul may seem dry and barren, and God may seem like a million miles away from me, and though I'm in this trouble, he said, thou wilt revive me. Look down at that next in verse 8. He said, The Lord will perfect that which pertaineth or which concerneth me. Now you can translate that little word perfect, but I want to tell you something we can all identify with as to what that word, He will perfect that which concerneth me. It just simply means this. Now this is not the Greek, but this is, this is, from the Tennessee alphabet, he'll fix it. <laughs> I'm in trouble! But he said the Lord's going to fix it. That which concerneth me, the Lord is going to fix it for me. He's going to perfect that which concerneth me. You're in trouble this morning, stick your tongue out at the devil and say, the Lord's going to fix it. Yeah. Amen. The Lord's going to fix it. Yeah. You don't have to go around with the mully grubs and be down in the mouth and depress everybody that gets around you. You can just say, look, I'm in trouble now. I'm in trouble now, but just wait. The Lord's going to fix it for me. He's going to perfect that which concerneth me. Yeah. Be positive about it. Look in Psalms again. I told you, if you're in trouble, you need to get in the book of Psalms. I was in here at 2 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Man, the Lord just having big time. Look in Psalm 46. Four things that's going bad in Psalms 46. 
But the psalmist was positive about it. He said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, now notice, notice the rest of that verse, though the earth be removed. Do you feel like your world is crumbling around you? He said, because God is our refuge and because he is a present help in trouble, I'm not going to fear if the world disappears, if the earth be removed. He said, I'm not going to fear. He said, therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. He said, we're not going to fear. Now look up in verse 10. He said, be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. You know what you need to do this morning? The best, way you, the best way in this world for you to be positive during a time of trouble is just for you to recognize who God is. Yeah. And sometimes we need to just be still. Amen. Yeah. He said, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. Be still and remember who I am. Yeah. Let me tell you how you can be positive in that time of trouble. Get up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, hey, have you forgotten who God is? Yeah. <laughs> Just stand there and be still for a moment in front of that mirror and know that he's God. And just tell that fellow that's looking back at you in the mirror, say, hey, you're in the time of trouble, but God's still God. Amen. And though the earth be removed, and though the mountains disappear into the sea, and though the earth shake, God is still God. That song Sister Shirley sings, he's God on the mountain, and he's God in the valley. Same God on the mountain is the same God in the valley. He don't change. He's still God. And when everything in your life is going wrong, be positive about who God is and know that God is still God regardless of what your circumstances may say. Be positive about it. One other reference. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you as much as I can here. Look in Psalms 27. We're in Psalms 46. Just turn back to Psalms 27. Psalms 27, verse 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Here's this rock again. He shall set me upon a rock. Now he said, this is what the Lord shall do for me. He said, he said he'll hide me in his provision, pavilion and he'll, and he'll hide me in the secret of his tabernacle and he'll set me upon a rock. Now, he said, I know the Lord shall do that. It may be tomorrow or it may be the next day, but I know I belong to God and I know that God will do that. And I like this, verse 6, and now. You see, verse 5, he says, this is what God's going to do. In verse 6, he said, this is what I'm going to do. Are you, are you getting this? Amen. He said, let me tell you what God's going to do. Now he said, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Now listen, I know what God's going to do in your situation, but the question is, what are you going to do? Right. Two o'clock this morning, the Lord said, what are you going to do? I said, I kind of like this, Lord. Let me. <laughs> he said, and now shall mine head be lifted up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Psalmist said, when I think about what God's going to do, I'm going to get my head up. He said, now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. David said, I know what the Lord's going to do, and I'm going to get my head up and go to church and shout. <laughs> yeah. 
Isn't that what he said? I mean, you know, that's kind of paraphrased a little bit, but that's what he's saying. He said, And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle. Sacrifices of joy I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. He said, boy, I'm in a time of trouble, but he said, I've, I know what God's going to do. He may not do it today, he may not do it tomorrow, but I know he's going to do it, and I'm going to be the first one at church, and I'm going to shout the loudest, and I'm going to be the first one in the choir and sing praises unto him. I'm going to be positive about this time of trouble I'm in. I'm going to get my head up and hold my head up. Some of you this morning just need to get your head up. God's still God. Just get your head up and say, devil, I'm going to shout anyway. Just be like the fellow that fell down the steps, got up and brushed yourself off and said, praise God anyhow. If you're down, you can get up through the Lord. One last thing and I'm through. Not only be prepared for it, be prayerful during it, be patient through it, be positive about it, but be productive because of it. Trouble don't have to sift every, everything good that there is about you from you. You can be productive because of trouble. I was reading a little story last night. I can't even remember it because I didn't know at the time I read it that I was going to use it this morning or even think about it at the time. God kind of just rearranged things. I had a wedding in Chattanooga last night. And honestly, I didn't, it was the first time I ever preached this message. And I was kicking around about thinking, you know, in my mind about preaching. It would have been convenient for me to have preached what I was going to preach last Sunday when y'all didn't let me preach. And the message entitled, What's in it for me? And I kind of thought that, you know, and kind of had it in my mind, that's what I was going to do. But God just kind of rearranged things. And I'm personally, I'm glad he did. But I was reading this little story, and it said, talked about this, this preacher he was preaching and said that he was preaching on the street. It's been many years ago. And somebody didn't like what he was preaching, they threw a brick at him and hit him in the head. And he sustained a serious injury. And for 18 months, he was an invalid. He couldn't preach. He was bedfast for 18 months. But during that 18 months, the Lord gave him a book, and he, he wrote a book. During that 18 months, he was bedfast. And that book became a bestseller and just, just sold thousands of copies and, and just blessed everybody that read that book. And somebody interviewed his wife, and they were talking about the accident that he had. She said, I kind of like to think of it like this. If there had been no brick, there would have been no book. In other words, he was productive during his time of trouble. We don't have to just fold up, folks. Now, the most common thing that people want to do when they get in trouble is just fold up until the trouble leaves and think, well, I'll get my life back together when this is over with. But do you know what? Life don't have to end every time trouble comes. Amen. You can be productive in your time of trouble you can look at it, you know what, in, in, in essence, this is what Paul did. When he went to the Lord, he said, Lord, I'm in trouble. I've got a thorn. It's hindering me. And he prayed for the Lord to move that thorn. He asked God three times about that thorn. And the Lord sent Paul an answer back, and he said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And you know what? It rearranged Paul's whole attitude about that thorn. He said, I thought this thorn was hindering me, but he said, you know what God said to me? God said, Paul, with that thorn in your life, I can let everybody see my strength clearer than, they could, they, than they'd ever be able to see it if you didn't have that thorn. He said, because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And Paul said, hey, I've got an opportunity to let everybody see 
how perfect and how wonderful the strength of the Lord is. And Paul, look, people looked at Paul's life. That's why that, those over there in the book of Philippians when he was in jail and everything, he said, because of my bonds and my time of trouble, he said, the brethren are waxing more bold to speak the word of God. You know what happened over there in Acts chapter 16 when Paul and Silas was, were in jail? They had been beaten and the blood was running down their back and they were thrown in jail at the midnight hour. Paul said, I'm not going to cave in to this time of trouble. I'm not going to quit. I want to be productive. I want something good to come out of this whipping that I've had for the gospel's sake. And at midnight they began to pray and sing praises unto God. And you know what? That old jailer looked in there and he said, hey, I see something unusual about them too. Well, they got something I'd like to have. And they went, you know what he did? In essence, he went in there and said, hey, how can I get what y'all have? I like what I see. I see something different about you. No way in the world that, that the human side of Paul wanted to sing and praise God at the midnight hour in that Philippian jail. But in that circumstance and in that experience was an opportunity for God to be seen more clearly than he otherwise could have been. And that old jailer looked in there and he saw something more than man. He saw something more than Paul and Silas. He said, I see something I need. And he said, what must I do to be saved? They were productive. Well, I could go on and on on that last point about being productive because you trouble. If you read the scriptures, there's a lot of good things that have come out of trouble. God, maybe that God just wants somebody to see Jesus more clearly in your life. Now, you're in a time of trouble, anybody can mourn and groan. The world does that. But you know what? When you're in a time of trouble, and you go on that job, and the people around you know the circumstances of your life, and you hold your head up with amazing grace in your heart, that crowd can look at you and see Jesus more clearly than they can at any other time. And it just might be they might see something in you that they'd want to have. Be productive about it. Don't, listen, don't, don't, don't let ever, ever time trouble comes rob you of you being a productive Christian. Whatever heads bowed and every eye closed. I've shared with you a message the Lord's impressed upon my heart to share with you this morning. I wonder just before I pray this morning, if there are people here in this building say, Preacher, without a doubt, without a doubt, God sent me a message this morning. I confess I'm in the time of trouble, and God has spoke to my heart this morning about living through trouble. I need your prayers. I need the prayers of this church that I would live through trouble with these Biblical principles that you've shared this morning. Would you slip up a hand and just say by that lifted hand, pray for me. God bless you. Hands going up all over the place this morning. God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. I wonder just before I pray, you may put your hands down. I wonder this morning, just before I pray, if there might be a person here in this building. Say, preacher, if I were to die right where I sit this morning, I have no hope of heaven. But I would not want to die and face God in my sin. Please remember me that I'd give my heart and life to the Lord before it's too late. Would you slip up a hand anywhere in this building and just say by that lifted hand, pray for me, just put it up and take it right back down. Anywhere. God bless you. God bless you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Father, I pray in Jesus' name this morning. You saw every hand this morning that has been raised. We know not the hearts and the minds of the people that's in this place today, but we know that you know us better than we know ourselves. And Lord, I pray this morning that you'll bless every person who raised a hand. Give them that added strength and grace and courage to live through the time of trouble that they may be in. And at the same time, bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord Jesus. And then I pray for those that may be here this morning that raised a hand that they were not saved, not ready to meet the Lord. May this be the day of salvation. 
May they come and give their heart and life to thee. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.